Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're gonna talk about light placement on the rifle. Those rifles back up, let's go. Now light placement is one of those topics that uh, can get pretty deep in the weeds pretty fast. Um, some people speaking from you know experience or what they use in the military or what they had to use in law enforcement or just what they kind of figured out on their own. Basically what we're talking about is where to put a light on a rifle's rail and why. I was speaking specifically about the rail because there really isn't any other place on the rifle receiver to mount it besides using like you see. Um, some legacy products from back when 7 inch rails were the norm where guys would actually mount it to the barrel which could cause problems all its own. We're not going to talk specifically about that. We're getting right into mounting it to the rail surface. Now, generally speaking, there's four places you can mount that light. The 12, the 3, the 6, the 9. So top, left, right, bottom, top, right, left, bottom, or some variation thereof such as the 11 o'clock position or the 1 o'clock mounting position. And sometimes you see people who are mounting it at the 5. Um, or maybe even the, the, the four, uh, and I've seen that before, and I've, I've seen people mount it at the seven. Uh, you've got that 360 degrees, and some mounts lend themselves better to mounting based on what you're trying to mount the light around. Uh, unless you're using uh, an enclosed unit, such as a handgun light, or just using the click cap on a uh, traditional flashlight style tubular body, uh, you're probably also going to have to mount some kind of pressure tape or pressure pad to the rifle as well. Now getting right into mounting positions, this is actually one of my favorite mounting positions and that's the 12 o'clock. The 12 o'clock mounting position lends itself very very well to handgun lights, however handgun lights aren't necessarily designed to be mounted to rifles. Not because they can't handle the recoil necessarily, because I've had pistol lights mounted on 5.56s and you know gone thousands and thousands of rounds without the light dying. Uh, now I can't say what the actual service life of a light would be on a rifle because I haven't fired that many rounds through one, but uh, I can say that it's probably going to, well you're going to get your money's worth before you actually kill the light with recoil. Same with uh, mounting a light to a handgun if it's a high quality light. Um, the problem, getting back to it, with mounting a pistol light to a rifle is pistol lights beam or their reflector is usually uh, designed with a pistol in mind, so you're probably going to have far more flood than hot spot. Uh, not necessarily a huge issue depending on what your rifle's for, but rifles usually have a more focused hot spot, so the rifle can actually be used to reach out further to rifle distances. Some people deride mounting the pistol light to the rifle. Uh, for their own reasons. There's a bunch of different reasons given. One of them is durability. Like I said, I haven't personally experienced a durability issue. Those rifles I've had come through classes that had high quality pistol lights on them, I have not seen a durability issue. So I can't really speak to that. But I will speak to the fact that the rifle is expected to be able to reach out even further. More necessarily more importantly than that, you may be able to get, a, get enough light out of a pistol light to hit a steel target or hit a piece of paper that you placed out there, but you won't necessarily get the light you need to actually positively identify your target. And if we're focusing on practicing and training for engaging human beings instead of paper, uh, positive identification of an active threat is, is important. Um, it's easy to hit a steel plate that you placed out there because you know it's there and you know it's what you're supposed to be shooting at. It's easy to, to hit the threat piece of paper target you put out there because you put it there and you're supposed to be shooting at it. Um, but if you have someone else place your targets for you and you don't necessarily know which one is the threat, that's how you really see if your light is going to do the work that you want it to do. Most likely situation to least likely situation. Uh, I'd say many people are just going to be setting up their rifle for home defense or within that envelope. So the furthest shot you may have to take is the furthest distance in your house from one wall to another. Say 10, 15, 20, 25 yards. Uh, some people even more than that. Uh, in a more rural setting or for law enforcement purposes, you can jump into the 50 to 100 meter possibilities pretty quick. And for me, 
a pistol light is going to be far more of an urban choice or uh, a rail space choice than it is going to be for a general purpose rifle that needs to be able to PID at those extended distances. From a control standpoint, the 12 o'clock mounting position is awesome. Not only do I prefer my light to be there, but I also like my controls to be there, but we'll get into that. Uh, with the 12 o'clock mounting position, the, the light is neutral to which side of the body that the rifle is being used on. So say I'm, I'm working a doorway or a piece of cover that exposes to the left or a piece of cover that exposes to the right. The light remains in the same place no matter the exposure, so I don't really have to change much in regards to my technique to get that light out from behind cover because I don't want to backsplash myself if I can avoid it, which means I don't want to have to, um, I don't want to activate the light before I've gotten the rifle out past the cover so I don't uh, self-illuminate myself with the light reflecting back off the cover. Um, it's it's uh, actually pretty drastic um, how much you can illuminate yourself very easily because think if you're pushing an 800 lumen light and the covers you know the cover is three to four inches from the muzzle of the rifle when you hit the light early or you hit the light because you didn't have the rifle out far enough that 800 lumens more or less is coming right back and illuminating yourself so the same amount of light you want to push down range is now illuminating you to your potential threat and that's kind of a big concern now there is technique involved in manipulating lights around cover and concealment and doorways and hallways and all that stuff. But just talking specifically about mounting position, from a, from a grip standpoint, the 12 o'clock makes a lot of sense, especially for self-contained units where the controls are also the light. Um, you're not messing with pressure pads and switches and all that stuff. It's all just one piece. Uh, some of the drawbacks, um, rail length is a huge decider in this kind of mounting position. I have always been a huge fan of have the most rail that your barrel length will allow you to have. This is a 10.5 inch uh, rifle, for example, and I've got just under 10 inches of rail. I think it's nine and change. Uh, that's, to me, significant. Uh, that gives me the most rail that I can get while still being able to manipulate accessories like mounting suppressors and stuff and doing service and things like that. So I'm able to have more options based on the rail space I have if I have other accessories that I need to mount. Now this rifle's just got some backup sights, it's got an aim point and a light. Pretty simple uh, configuration. I consider this the basic mode of operation. Uh, for those of you that still subscribe to you have to have backup sights. Now one thing that I've heard um, specifically referred to on this, this particular gun is, well why is your front sight behind your light? Well because if I can't see, I can't shoot. And the light on this rifle is going to take priority over these rear sights. Anyone can take their rear sight and move it back and check their zero, get their gun zeroed for whatever their potential, potential zero distance is, their 5200 or their 100 meter, or even the people out there still using the, the 25. And see that even with iron sights, even with the front sight moved back this far, I can still hit really, really accurately. If you think about the seven inch guns, the guns with the seven inch rail, where is that front sight in relation to the length of the barrel? Now you think about the M4 carbine, uh, you've got seven inches of rail and then an A-post. So we're looking at a very similar sight diameter on this rifle. Uh, I wouldn't push it back any further than this necessarily, depending on what the rifle was set up for, but since we're talking specifically about just light mount placements, light takes priority because without light, I can't even use the iron sights in a low light situation. Up next, you have one of your most common uh, light mounting situations. That's, that's either the three or the nine. Uh, I mount my mine, mine on the three because I shoot rifle right-handed. I like the light on the outside of my dominant side. Now, my controls are going to be mounted at the 12 o'clock. The reason for that is pretty simple. If I have to transition the rifle's controls over to the left side of my body, I don't want to have to be doing some weird grip to get to my light control. I like it to be able to be used from either side of the body with ease. Uh, drawbacks to this particular mounting situation is the fact like we already talked about with the 12 o'clock is this rifle or I should say this light placement is going to lend itself very well to the side that it's mounted on so if I have a right side exposure it's going to come it's going to expose very easily if I have a left side exposure I'm going to have to push myself out further than I normally would in order to get the light past the cover to avoid backsplashing myself and make sure I have all my light going downrange towards them when I'm supposed to shoot. That's only the, that's really the only drawback. Uh, obviously, um, it gets in a preference of mounting positions. I'm able to push my light a little further. And again, this is a, this is an 11.85 inch uh, PWS Mark 111. Uh, and I've got a 10 inch rail on it. So I've got a decent amount of rail space uh, relative to the length of the barrel. And I generally run this rifle pretty much full-time suppressed. So I'm okay pushing my alert that far forward. Now, if I was to run this rifle uh, without the suppressor, 
my flashlight, my weapon light, is sitting right there next to my muzzle device, which means it's going to, under shooting conditions, it's going to it's going to cloud up pretty quickly, and it's going to take more concussive abuse than it would normally, especially if you're going to the guys that run like a brake. A brake is just going to beat the hell out of your light. So most people who don't run suppressed tend to sit those lights back a little bit further, which isn't that huge of a deal until you get into hand placement. If the light body sits back so far that I can't get my fingers around my rail, if that's my preferred method and my default method of holding the rifle, that's a significant issue. And that's when you see people taking their lights up to their one o'clock or the 11 o'clock, so they free up more space for their hand. This rifle, not really an issue, or I should say not really a possibility, because this is a night vision gun. It's got a maul on it. Um, and as you can see, the maul takes priority. And then I have my light controls after that, and I'm opt. Now, I do have backup sights on this gun because the ball lends itself very well to that mounting. In this situation, it is mounted further forward because I didn't have to worry about a 12 o'clock light taking priority over that mounting position. Um, all things considered, uh, just from an ergonomic standpoint, it would have been pretty hard for me to mount this anywhere else unless I tried to sneak it in between the mall and this cloud defensive uh, uh, light shoe. Uh, and that would just create problems I don't really want to deal with. So in this situation, the front sight goes forward. So. When it comes to mounting, sometimes it comes down to placement of accessories. If there was no maul on this gun, uh, the setup between the relationship between front sight and light pad might be slightly different. Um, I can't really mount a light like this to the 12, 12 o'clock position and have it clear my optic body. So that's why uh, it's got to go to the three or it's got to go to the nine. Now one thing that's definitely worth mentioning when it comes to light placement, we kind of already touched on it, is how close is that light going to be to your muzzle? And this is where rail space can help. If you have a 14.5 inch pin or 16 inch, your traditional length guns, uh, you can have a lot of rail space. Uh, and that allows you to push your light a little bit further back than maybe you'd, you'd think would make sense, but can provide you with that ability to keep a cleaner light for longer. In a realistic situation, how many rounds are you gonna fire? I don't know. I can I can say pretty confidently though you're going to shoot less than what you'd shoot in a thousand round course of fire during a class. Uh, it's going to take 10, 15, 20 or usually considerably more than that on good quality self defense ammunition to really carbon up that light to where you start to lose the light's output. So that's something to consider about light placement. Don't place your light with a class necessarily in mind. Place your light with actual use in mind. Push it f as far forward as you think you can comfortably do it. If you're running a brake, I'd try to keep it away from the brake just because of that concussive force can actually damage the light over time. I mean, shock, uh, shock is shock. So eventually that's gonna start to play hell with your electronics. Quality of the light's gonna determine how long that takes. Another thing that's worth mentioning when it comes to the three versus the nine o'clock is if you're running a suppressor or you're running a light further about, you're gonna get shadow. You're gonna get shadow off of uh, your suppressor or your barrel length. It's not going to be much, but it, it can be distracting. And I say it's not going to be much relative to how far back you pull the light. If you're running a 7-inch rail on a 16-inch gun, you're going to have a considerable barrel shadow. Now, we used to see a lot of 6 o'clock mounted lights. In fact, Surefire used to make a dedicated uh, vertical grip with a light built into it, which if you had one back in the day, you were the coolest kid on the block, especially if it was issued to you and you didn't have to spend your own pennies to buy it. Uh, that light was great. It was designed with the seven inch rail drop in military esque in mind. It's you had to put the light somewhere. When you added a peck and a light and an optic and a sling and all this other nonsense to s literally seven inches worth of space, you ran out of a place for the soldier to put his hand. So vertical grips became pretty popular. That goes back to me being like, have the longest rail you possibly can. Um, the drawbacks to the six o'clock mounting position are barrel shadow, which isn't too bad because it's going to cast the shadow straight up directly in your field of vision. It's going to necessarily, depending on context of your engagement or context of what you're doing with your rifle, split your available light between either side of the rifle when you're looking straight down it, which can be aggravating. And then there's this to consider, and I see this in, in low light classes all the time. The placement of your light in relation to the sh position that you're shooting from is going to decide how much light is available to push down range. When I have students shoot from the prone position, those running 12 o'clock lights generally have more light down range than those running at the 3, the 9, or the 6. Uh, there's a lot of different rifle lights out there. Some of them lend themselves very, very well to less than ideal shooting positions, but I want all the light I have available to me pushing down range. If I'm shooting in tall grass, if I'm shooting in the snow, if I'm shooting in any non, I should say, sterile condition, I'm gonna have objects or plants or 
complications in the environment I'm shooting in that are going to steal some of my light from me. And mounting positions can kind of dictate how well that goes. Uh, you want to put it in a position that's as ergonomic as possible, especially when it comes to control features, but you also don't want a position that you default put your, put your hand in. So just like this, I'm, I'm mounted at 12 o'clock. My thumb doesn't go up there unless it's activating the device. So this hand's responsible for management of the light in the mall and things like that. Uh, but I'm not gonna stick my hand up there normally during shooting unless I'm purposely activating the light. If I were to mount my pressure pad along the side of the rifle, I may have a negligent light discharge when I didn't mean to because that's where my hand normally goes. In this situation, the thumb only goes up top to control things. That's how I practice, that's how I was trained. And it significantly cuts down on negligent light discharges. Now, as you've seen from some of the examples I've showed you from uh, footage from classes, uh, it, it can, it's really easy to use light incorrectly. And the whole purpose of people coming to classes is to learn how to use light correctly. Uh, we all have lights, headlights, lights in our house, flashlights, weapon lights, things like that. But that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to deploy it in the best way possible. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can get just on basic practice. Uh, and one of the things I, th I like to think about is always paying attention to how much my light is actually going to where I want it to go. And is that light causing me any issues? Um, the lumen argument is still a thing. People, There's people out there that still say, well, you only need two or you only need 250, which I think is like presupposing what situation you're going to need light in. If you think about it, if I've got a 200 lumen light or a, even a 500 lumen light mounted on a rifle and my mounting position and the position that I have to shoot from steals 100 or 200 of those lumens from me because of the environment that I'm in, such as high grass, I'm not, I don't have as much light now going down range. Mounting position also dictates. Um, your default position to shoot a rifle in these days is standing, and especially in an urban environment, but kneeling, prone, and any other vari variation of an unorthodox shooting position you might find yourself in is very possible. So you have to consider that when you're mounting your lights. Uh, even though I do love the default 12 o'clock mounting position, there just isn't a really good rifle dedicated light that mounts to that position. I know somebody in the comic is gonna bring up the, the Enforce the WML X, and I'm gonna say no. And the reason I'm gonna say no is because I've seen enough of those lights come through classes that there's no way in hell I'm putting one on my rifle. Uh, the light is not good. Uh, even though it can project, I think it's 800 lumens, uh, 600, 800 lumens. It doesn't look like 600, 800 lumens because the candela is garbage. Uh, and I don't, I, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings here, but I've just seen enough of these lights. So my sample size is pretty large to know that there's just no way I'm going to go with that dedicated 12 o'clock mounting position. Now, that light does have very good controls. I like the design of the light. I just don't like the durability and I don't like the output. It's been a while since I've had a student come through one of those in a, in a low light class and actually say, you know what, I'm going to keep this light. Usually at the end of the class, usually at the end of the first night or maybe in the end of the second night, it's uh, what's the best place to buy a stream light, what's the best place to buy a Surefire. Uh, the light just doesn't have the horsepower uh, that it should have. And I know they're working on it and they've definitely made strides, so the light is, their light quality is more or less getting better. And that's good because that's what companies should do if they're going to sell light that people are going to put their lives in the hands of. Think about the purpose, think about what rail space you have available to you, and um, factor in what you're most likely going to be using the rifle for, and then get as many lumens on that gun as you possibly can because it's a rifle, and the light should be able to push out as far as you should. You could reasonably have an expectation of shooting. I'm Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.